Can I beat Fallout New Vegas as the mysterious stranger? Let's see, so what do we know about the stranger in New Vegas? Not enough for someone to make a thorough lore video on him, but enough for me to make a video like this. We know his base stats, and we can use the console commands to spawn in his clothes and weapons. Regarding his stats, they are 6 in strength, 7 perception, 5 endurance, 3 charisma, 3 intelligence, 6 agility and 5 luck, but that leaves 5 special points left that the courier can still have. So I'm gonna have 10 agility and 6 luck, because I think is what fits the stranger more. The tagged skills I'm gonna go with are guns, sneak and survival, and as for the traits, I've decided to go with build to destroy and fast shot. In hindsight, the build to destroy perk is gonna be useless as I won't need extra critical damage. Doc Mitchell then gives me a pip boy and gives me what I had on me when Benny shot me. And that'll lead us into Prim to find more about the man who shot us. But first, preparations. And I figure the stranger doesn't much care for doing quests, but as Nick Valentine puts it in his file about the stranger, and I quote, Best case, the man is an amoral lunatic. Worst case, a prolific serial killer. Yeah, on either extreme of the scale, the stranger seems to be a man that wouldn't not care about what Benny did or why. So I'm not gonna let it go and my first thought is I'm gonna need some 44 ammo. So let's see if Che has any. He doesn't, but he has a shovel and sometimes graves have ammo, so let's try that. And no, nothing. Okay, this seems like a good time for me to give me the items I'm gonna have to use, so let me just spawn in the mysterious stranger hat, outfit and the 44 magnum. No ammo though, I'm gonna have to find that by myself. Now, before I dive on in, some rules for this challenge. 1. I can only equip the armor and weapons of the mysterious stranger. Throwing weapons, explosives, etc. not allowed. No restraints on consumables though. 2. If I don't have ammo, I need to go get it immediately. After getting one round, at any point, if I don't have ammo, the challenge is lost. I can also sell the courier's stash items for caps or ammo. 3. All my decisions have to make sense. I have to use his base stats, even though I can improve upon them, and I need to take the Mysterious Stranger perk as soon as it's available. The tagged skills and traits gotta make sense. 4. I cannot level skills by only wanting to progress the game, meaning I cannot level up, for example, explosives or speech just for a skill check. But if a perk fits the stranger, then I could, but I'm not going to. 5. The stranger has no affiliations, so I have to do the yes man ending. And 6. We take care of our own. And you'll see what I mean by that later. Also, I'll just let you know the skills I'll be leveling up and the perks that I'm gonna be taking. Guns and sneak are all the skills I reckon I'll need. As for the perks, I'm gonna go with rapid reload, run and gun, gunslinger, quick draw and the mysterious stranger in that order. Now, the first thing I need is ammo, and I could just do the skip through Deathclaw Valley into the Gun Runners. But I've done that several times, and I want to try something different. I have an idea, but I don't know if it'll work. With that being said, I'm still gonna go in that direction because ammo is more important than Prim right now. So I passed through Gene Skydiving. Chomps Lewis tells me no one will help me if I go into the Deathclaw's direction. And Snuffles is a cutie. I ignore Chomp's advice, go through Neil's shack, find Neil and do the skip. But instead of going towards the strip, I'm instead gonna go to the 188 trading outpost. And aside from seeing two mongrels aggroed before Sloan, I haven't encountered enemies, which I thought I would, but apparently coming to the 188 earlier is quite doable. Now, there's two things I want to test here, and the first requires a Veronica. No offense, Having her tag along means free entry to the Brotherhood's bunker. 
Ramos rambles on forever, tells me to speak to Elder McNamara, but I'm only here for Knight Torres, who promptly reminds me that she won't sell anything to outsiders. And the stranger does not affiliate himself with nobody, so that's a dead end. The other thing on the 188 is an arms merchant. And even though I read that she can have 44 ammo, she doesn't have any. Great. Guess I'm gonna have to go and do the full skip. Welcome, so into the Sarah gun runners Lord, we go. And then I remembered something. The 2000 cap check that the Securitron will require from me later. So before buying the ammo, which the Vendertron does have, I'm gonna sell stuff I don't need and go straight to the strip's entrance. A thug attacked me and I cannot fight back, but fortunately, old Ben comes to the rescue. The Securitrons accept my caps hey, check and you notice that old Ben did not warn me about not going past the robots willy-nilly. That means that the script that has a guy running and getting gunned down won't happen as well. Nothing's broken though. When I come back later, it'll happen, but now it's time to get ourselves some ammo. So I go back to the Vendertron and check if Mick from Mick and Ralph's and if Blake from the Crimson Caravan Another have ammo, customer. and they do. Come. I uh, wasn't expecting Victor to come after me she and talk as if I had remember. entered the strip, I know you but he did, so I guess that would be tied to the caps I'm check. Either way, we're now ready to find more about the man that shot us. The journey to Prim was a breeze. I deactivated the mines and had the first fight of the run against two escaped convicts. As you can see, combat is not gonna be an issue. But into the Bison Steve Hotel we go. I make some quick work out of the rest of the convicts, and here's Deputy Beagle. I don't suppose you came here to rescue me. I'd cross my fingers, but my hands are numb. As useless as he's funny. Today's not gonna be his day, cause after all, the stranger ranges from amoral to sheer evil. So I'm gonna take what I need and leave him to enjoy his numbness. This is most unusual. You're We're now on our way to investigate Novak, oh and the quickest way for me to get there is from the 188, so let's take that route. On the way, we find an amazing character. The Lonesome there, Drifter, whose story reminds me a lot about a certain someone. This here guitar is just about the only thing my daddy left me. Long time ago now. I never even knew him. Ma always said he was a mysterious fella, always traveling on in secret. After Ma died, I guess I wanted to find my pa and get some answers from him. Been out here looking ever since, but he ain't an easy man to find. Maybe I'll just ask him why. Maybe I'll punch him right in the mouth. Hell, the more I talk about it, the more the whole damn thing sounds like a dumb idea. Don't suppose you know any place a fellow with a guitar might find a job, huh? In Novak, we find many Vargas hey, that will help us I'm if to make I do his idea. quest. Instead, I'm just gonna pickpocket yeah, what I need yeah. from him. And it'll point me to Boulder City. So, to Boulder City we go. Lieutenant Monroe tells me that a situation is happening between his troops and the Khans. I kinda need to speak to the Khans, so we've got a mess to solve. Upon meeting Jessup, I came to the conclusion that I can either spend a bit of caps or have to fight. Well, I see no reason for a fight considering that I won't even need that many bullets for the run, so let's find a compromise. 500 caps later and Jesse gives me Benny's lighter and everything I need to know. I then make my way to Red Rock Canyon so I can take a good look at the idiots that helped Benny and buy some Mantats. I don't know if I'll need them, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. There's another thing I'd like to do take before easy, going dude. to the strip, and that is to make a bet with George. The boomer okay. that's not part of the boomers. Bad. He You'll says he'll double my money, I survive, and then luckily for him, now I am the main protagonist. So yeah, it's free the money. The, the boomer guard can't believe I managed to get to the gate, and Raquel directs me Follow to class, Mother Pearl, who says they've been, been waiting for five good. years to have a visitor, even though they greet so everyone with explosions. Good. Yeah, I know, it's silly. Out of curiosity, I go into the mess hall and munitions yeah. storage to see if they have any more of that sweet, Not sweet ammo. Permission. But the munitions it. manager tells me that he won't trade right. with me without Pearl's permission, so whatever, if I, if I need to, I'll just go back to the gun runners. 
back at the North Vegas Strip entrance, and Old Ben remembers that he has a script to follow through, which prompts the squatter to have the worst day of his life, proving that Old Ben is the root of that guy's demise. In the Strip, the Omertas tell me I can't have weapons in their casino, so I just leave. And who do we find if not Billy Knight? I take my wife everywhere, but somehow she keeps finding her way back. I did it! They really care about your privacy here at the Tops. Even room service has an enlisted number. What? A ghoul goes to a doctor and says, Doctor, doctor, I have this horrible rash. The doctor says, son, that's called your face. Ding dong. I then go and meet so the White Glove question. Society, where Mortimer bores me to death to with his silly spiel, and let's go into the tops. Hey, hey, fella, to the the greeter takes my weapons, I go straight into Benny's room, and I forgot that I don't have enough lockpicking for this, so... I go back downstairs, take the key from one of Benny's bodyguards without him even seeing me. Yes, Nick apparently is working. And then I go back to meet hey, Yes Man, who proceeds to tell me Benny's whole plan and seems quite happy to follow through with it, no matter who's the boss. Back in the casino, and I'm just gonna make a quick detour into the theater where Tommy Torini tells me hey, that if hey, I welcome, meet some welcome, good welcome acts on the road to give them his card and that I'll get a cut on the profits. The ammo is not gonna buy itself, so that'll give me some more financial security. And guess who I found? Betty! And he even gave me the key to the presidential suite. What a warm welcome, except it's a trap. And I don't have my magnum. But I don't need it, because no one will follow me outside, so I just run. Vulpes then gives me the mark of Kaiser. I see Billy again and tell him to go make some more money. You again. You should meet my bookie. You have something in common. Every time I talk to you, I lose caps. And he just shows me exactly why he ain't right, making none. Yeah? Hey, you're all right. Tell him I'll do it for a hundred a night. No, fifty. No, twenty. Ten. Just don't rob me, I'll do it. Before going into Cottonwood Cove, I decide to go to the Atomic Wrangler oh, where hey. Hadrian tells me he would join the Top's theater if he wasn't under contract. And I expected contract. his contract to be more expensive than 150 caps, so I just pay it off. In Novak, I found Bruce Isaac, who decided to become a singer for Tommy. And all I'm missing is the drifter. So I take the quick detour to take care of our own, cuz... Uh, we're probably his father. Maybe it's time he to doesn't time know though, and rest. instead of telling right, him, I'm just gonna got. go out to buy some milk. Again. Back to Tommy I so I can have my rewards and Hadrian's performing. Looking down at all your smiling faces. That won't last long. Wonder where Benny got off. This guy's so sharp-eyed, he cuts himself every time he blinks. Hey, look at this guy. I didn't know they let Brahmin into this joint. I don't know why, but when it was time for the Drifter to perform, uh, he seems to have forgot to turn the playback on. Because I sure didn't forget to turn the music on. Unless it counts as radio? That could have been it, though, because I did have that turned off. But back to our journey, and I go to Cottonwood Cove, where Cursor Lucullus sees the mark and takes me to the fort. And in Kaiser's tent, we see... Benny! He, uh, he can't talk though. Kaiser will kill him if so he I so sneezes. Meanwhile, Edward tells me to take the platinum chip to the bunker That's beneath the fort here, right? and that no, Benny can laugh, finally baby. speak, so I, I ask Benny how he feels about crosses and I in the bunker, Mr. House asks me to upgrade the Securitrons, which, of course, I do. Kaiser thinks we did good, Benny's gonna go hug a cross, and back He's in the strip, Victor too. invites like me to check house. out the we penthouse. But my plans for Mr. House are a bit more personal than he would like, so I use the platinum chip to get into the control room and have Cyborg Bunker Boy breathe fresh air for the first time in what, 200 years? Anyway, I'm just gonna use the terminal to disable him, and it's now time to have Yes Man control the Lucky 38. He insists on showing me the upgraded Securitrons and all their beauty. Yes Man then instructs me to install an override chip in the Eldorado's power substation, which the NCR is really not gonna be happy about, especially considering how strong my Magnum is. I swear, this is beyond ridiculous. 
Now with the chip installed, there's some preparations to be done. So I go back to Doc Mitchell, buy some steam packs, then back to the gun runners for some more ammo, and finally, back to Yes Man. And we're gonna do what Joshua Graham couldn't. We're gonna take Hoover Dam for ourselves. In Hoover Dam, we have a lot of target practice. Everything's a one-hit KO, and we install the override chip without any issue. Yes Man then asks me if I would rather turn the dam into a useless stone or activate an army of Securitrons. Yeah, I'll take the army, please. So, a couple Legion and NCR members on the inside, another couple Legion members on the east side of the dam, and to Legatus camp we go. Lanius gets one shot without even opening his mouth, his men are defeated, and who do we find on the way out? General Lee Oliver, who gets to see a whole Securitron army and the mysterious stranger destroying all his rangers in vats. Yes man then tells me that he's gonna take a nap and we're done. Can I beat Fallout New Vegas as the mysterious stranger? Yep. And sure, it wasn't too hard, but it was fun. But don't worry, everything will be okay. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again. And the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The courier, with the aid of Yes Man, drove both the Legion and the NCR from Hoover Dam, securing New Vegas' independence from both factions. With Mr. House out of the picture, part of the Securitron army was diverted to the Strip to keep order. Any chaos on the streets was ended quickly. Chaos became uncertainty, then acceptance with minimal loss of life. New Vegas assumed its position as an independent power in the Mojave. Preferring neither the best of the NCR nor the worst of the Legion, the courier was the man responsible for a truly independent New Vegas. He had removed Mr. House from power over the street and broken the influence of the NCR and Caesar's Legion in the Mojave Wasteland. With little law left in the wasteland, the Brooms continued to defend themselves against the prospectors and scavengers invading their territory. After the courier ensured New Vegas remained free, the followers found that independent Vegas was even more unstable and violent than before. Old Mormon Fort became excessively burdened by the influx of patients, struggling to provide even the most basic of services. With New Vegas' independence formally declared, Good Springs thrived. More travelers stopped by Good Springs on their way to and from the Strip, and the locals were prosperous from the travel. The kings retained their control of Freeside. And while they continued to favor the needs of locals, they tolerated the citizens of the defeated NCO. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Francine powder gang tormented the Mojave wasteland for years. The citizens of the NCO were favorite targets, and all of this suffered from their space. And so the courier's road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spared. Many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes.